Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Zettelkasten note-taking method. And if you're new to it and you're not familiar with what it is, this video is the one for you. And if you are familiar and you're just learning it, then I'll be diving into what it is, how it works, and giving you that information that I wish I had when I started learning this method. Now, if you've heard of Smart Notes before, it is pretty much the same thing. So Zettelkasten means slip box in German, and it was created by the German sociologist Nicholas Luhmann, who essentially would do lots of reading and created all these notes that embodied the works that he created from it. So let's cover what it is. So I've got this graphic here, which I put together to sort of break it down and show the workflow around it. Um, just so it really solidifies some of the some of the concepts. So the idea is that you have three types of notes. You have a fleeting note, a literature note, and permanent note. So fleeting note, these are your ideas that you've got. Maybe you've got some quotes from a book, so you're highlighting books. You want to capture these in small notes. Um, you've got tweets that you've seen, maybe just a thought, like a shower thought, and you want to capture that down. We call them fleeting notes because they won't be around for very long. We want to just capture it and then move it across through into our into our workflow so that become permanent notes, which we'll come to in a moment. Um, so we take these notes and they become the form, uh, the source of a literature note. And we say literature note, but we really we mean things like, yes, books you read, but also things like articles, YouTube videos, podcasts, anything like that. But a literature note is your represented understanding of that concept. So for example, if I've read a passage, I've highlighted it. Now I want to write it in my own words, what it means to me, my understanding. And I want to keep that quite concise just for that one thing, not a massive document of all the things from a book. You want to break it down into each part. Um, and essentially, it's a summary of your understanding. And uh, it also can come from like your own thoughts from a book. Quite often, I'll read something, I'll highlight it, but it's actually sparked a completely different thought in my mind. I will catch that in the Kindle app, and that would then become a literature note, which doesn't have to be related to the book. It can be uh, anything, as, because as we put it into the permanent notes, that's when it finds its natural home. So then we can use these fleeting notes and literature notes as the source of our permanent notes. A permanent note is a single idea on one note. And we refer to it as a card because it used to be index cards prior to the, like, the digitization of note taking. So one single idea on a note. It's got to be easy to understand in isolation, which means I can take any note, read it, and comprehend what it means. So that in six months, 12 months, 10 years, I can read that same note and recall the understanding that that note portrays. And that is really important. I'm not burying it in massive documents. I'm not paraphrasing. I'm not just copy and pasting blocks of text from a book or an article and just collecting those. That's, that's archiving for another purpose, right? This is my understanding in my words, and it's easy to understand. Small notes make it easy to discover and link things together. So if I've got a note on, say, how the brain stores memories, that's easy on its own rather than a note which is in a document about the brain, for example. So it's easy to then make a discovery and link that to something else. So the idea is that we start building up a collection of permanent notes, but on their own, it's really hard to organize those and we maybe think about categorizations and things like that but actually what we do is we link them together by directionally we say this note links to something else so if it's about the brain i might relate that to a note about um uh, think of an example uh the, the crocodile brain uh i might link it to mindset i might link it to all different kinds of things that are relevant to my understanding so an example here would be if i've got a note about say uh, brain stress triggers, so that your brain can get triggered from an external source, the croc brain kicks, kicks in or the monkey brain kicks in, and it consults your memories of how you should feel before your human part of the brain has kicked in. I might have a note encapsulating that concept. I then might have another note that talks about imposter syndrome, where someone gets anxious in a workplace environment, for example, feeling that they aren't worthy of being there and that they're an imposter and they haven't earned the credentials and all of that. Those Two notes on their own are fine. You can understand them in, in their own context. But now imagine you bring them together. You can create a new insight. 
Here's a brain that has an external trigger that causes your, your croc or monkey, monkey part of the brain to feel anxious because it's an emotionally driven thing, regardless of any logic here. And then you have imposter syndrome where you're in a place where you have triggers. Maybe it's a coworker, maybe it's a, an environmental trigger that causes your croc brain to go and consult how you should feel. And you start feeling anxious, thus kicking in the imposter syndrome feeling. Bring those two together in your note taking and you can create a new insight. So, for example, I can create a new note, put that in my permanent store, link it to the brain stress triggers, link it to the imposter syndrome. There's a new note that's saying him that the insight could be that imposter syndrome could be caused by environmental triggers that cause the croc brain to uh, have a stored memory of feeling insecure and anxious. And thus you have a physical response to feeling like that, which we call imposter syndrome. That could be the insight there, right? So we take that, we put that in our slip box. And now that we have a new insight that is completely original to our own thinking, because we've spotted the gap, we've linked them together, we can then use that in our writing. So we could go create a blog post on that. We could go create a YouTube video on that. So if you are if you want to blog about things, if you want to create content about things, the great thing about the Zettelkasten is I have these two things I've put together. I've got an insight. I now have a topic to talk about. And what you could also use it for is you can ask questions to your slip box. So for example, in this exa in this case, I could have said, does imposter syndrome have a link to brain stress triggers? That would be a question. I can then pull the notes relating to those things and start correlating, does that marry up with this? If so, let's create an insight note here. And eventually you can either find that you prove that it doesn't, you can prove that it might, or you can show that you've got gaps and that you actually need to do some more research. And the good thing about this, if you start answering these questions, you start coming up with these insights, you're not definitively saying these things are true or false. You're saying these are the insights. It could do with more research. In some cases, it can just help people in their understanding of a situation that gives them uh, you know, the confidence to overcome something. Um, and if you're in the scientific field, then obviously it's kind of a, a precursor to actually following up on research and proving something as true or false in that sense. So that's it in a nutshell. Capture your ideas, your fleeting notes, create your own understanding to boil that down into your literature notes, and then start organizing them into your permanent notes, link them together, and then find the insights and bring them together and then use that in your writing. So for me, this is a fantastic way of solving my problem of listening to lots of audiobooks and reading books and wanting to create understanding that I can come back to in 12 months time, 24 months time, to be able to create blog posts and YouTube videos on the subject. I think that's really good. I'm building my own note-taking app that helps you do this with a view of being able to publish that work at the end, but also to help you do a little bit every day. Organize your fleeting notes, your literature notes, organize your permanent notes, do the studying. A little bit every day compounds over time. And uh, the app I'm building is called Flowtelic, and it helps you study, learn, think, write, and publish with maximum efficiency and consistency. I love the deep work way of doing things. I love the atomic habits. Uh, I've got the book up there where a you know, small amount every day compounds over time. And I love the idea of building up a wealth of knowledge that you can help other people, which is part of my why. I want to create more content around the insights that I find, uh, but also teaching the methods of how I've come up with those insights as well. So if that's of interest to you, do check out the app. Go to join.flowtelic.com where you can drop your email in. You'll get on the wait list, but ultimately you also get access to the, to the kind of pre-release version of the app to play with. And if you are interested in taking this further, and you'll learn more of the techniques and also other apps that you can do it in, like Obsidian um, and uh, other apps around like around that. Uh, my goal on this channel is to help you succeed in your knowledge journey, and I think that's really good. So uh, do consider subscribing. So thank you very much, and catch you in the next video.